Good morning, I am Les Roy Williams, the Director General of the St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service. Today I am here with His Excellency, the Ambassador Priyo Iswanto, who is Ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia to St. Kitts and Nevis. We welcome him once again to the shores of St. Kitts and Nevis, but this time with a little sad note, his Excellency is leaving us. He's leaving the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis for good. And we want to wish him all the best. But we know that he has served us very well. And we want to hear some of his experiences in terms of his, his time with us. So Your Excellency, welcome to this interview. And it, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you, that's right. right. How does it feel after four and a half years, you said, that you would have served leaving us here in St. Kitts and Nevis? I have visited uh, many times this beautiful country, St. Kitts and Nevis, and uh, I uh, uh, quite, uh, uh, I am very satisfied. Uh, with uh, my uh, service uh, here, uh, credited as the first Indonesian ambassador to uh, St. Kate and Nevis. So it is a proud for me, an honor for me to serve, uh, to work together uh, with the government here. And uh, during uh, the four, more than four years, uh, I've uh, been receiving full support of the government of St. Kate and Nevis, and that's why. Uh, he could get uh, correctly uh, uh, classified that uh, uh, we have done a lot uh, to uh, make our foundation stronger. So uh, this is uh, my, uh, uh, my uh, uh, pride, my honor, uh, that uh, although it's in the first start, uh, we have been able to uh, lay down a stronger foundation uh, for our future bilateral relations. As an example, uh, a small but concrete, uh, we've been able uh, to uh, appoint uh, an honorary council, uh, the first in this country, and uh, I uh, would say that uh, during the process, it was the fastest process uh, within uh, uh, the bureaucracy of Indonesia because uh, from the uh, past experience when we propose a candidate to be an honorary council, uh, honor council it took uh, quite a long time <laughs> uh, before the president uh, signed the decree but uh, uh, in the case of uh, Mr. Farhan Lawrence it was uh, taking a very uh, short period and uh, it, it's my, it was my uh, my pride also, my honor also to present to the government here that the process was very quick and uh, it again indicates the importance of this country uh, to my country and also that we uh, pay more attention and we uh, touch great importance uh, to our relations with these uh, beautiful countries and uh, St. Gates and Nevis. I am so happy to see you wearing the the colors of the national dress of St. Gates and Nevis, which really shows that you you have become so comfortable and, and, and so connected with our people and our culture here. And I think that that is a, is a very good thing. Now, I know that Indonesia has offered one of the areas of cooperation has been that of scholarships and training, because that is always so important for our people. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Well, uh, starting from uh, my time that I'm wearing today, no? uh, after having served for more than four years, I uh, learned also uh, the uh, closeness to be friends of the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. And I also uh, told to my friends here, even today, 
uh, I go to uh, His Excellency Governor General that upon leaving, because our experience here, uh, we will spread uh, big room in our heart that St. Kitts and Nevis will have another special friend in my country and uh, St. Kitts and Nevis will have another ambassador apart from the official ambassador accredited to my country of course mm -hmm. that's why uh, and coincidentally it's September you will celebrate uh, the Independence Day the National Day and I feel so uh, cherished also uh, with that celebration that's why uh, I'm uh, coming here and today I'm wearing the national tie the yes. national color of St. Kitts and Nevis it uh, again demonstrates that uh, in uh, my life there always a big room in our heart to be close to this beautiful country and this beautiful uh, people and uh, back to the uh, project that uh, we uh, have uh, harnessed together it's a small one but uh, to my opinion it's very concrete achievable and hopefully that uh, more uh, participants more students from St. Kitts and Nevis uh, would uh, uh, involve more uh, to the project uh, scholarship for example we offer every year and uh, we uh, allocate a certain quota for uh, students from uh, St. Kitts and Nevis actually uh, I uh, fight uh, to the Ministry of Education to give more allocation more students uh, from St. Kitts and Nevis and also in the neighboring uh, countries also and uh, uh, it was hurt <laughs> uh, one example in 2018 uh, we uh, invited one scholar uh, to learn Tantin in my country uh, she learned more than one year and she now is uh, an expert how to uh, draw party, how to uh, develop the party, hopefully that it will be uh, one of the leaders in uh, women empowering because uh, in my country party uh, is normally done by uh, uh, women uh, mostly also uh, to help the home industry and to uh, uh, promote the creative economy and in the end economically speaking it's very important to uh, elevate uh, the poverty and also to involve uh, some women in the empowerment so they can create their own jobs from their homes <laughs> so i think it's good good example uh, from practical uh, point of view it's uh, very useful and uh, for uh, skill also it's, uh, it's useful uh, to spread uh, the uh, uh, party knowledge because party is uh, recognized by UNESCO as uh, World Heritage of, uh, human, uh, of uh, Humanity. Uh, this is one example, uh, uh, Mr. Roy. We offered also capacity buildings in various sectors. Uh, just recently we offered capacity building in agriculture in uh, fisheries and also in creative economy because this year we declared uh, the year of uh, creative economy and, and uh, in my country uh, economy, uh, creative economy uh, has uh, up shop more than 17 million uh, uh, employed. Uh, it also contributes uh, more than 8% to our national uh, GDP. Uh, it's quite uh, flourishing. And then, uh, you know, the trend, the trend is now <laughs> for uh, creative economy. No? So, again, uh, these are small things uh, that we uh, started. And, of course, 
I would like to underline here that the two governments have uh, given us incentives uh, in the form of visa exemption. Uh, people from St. Kitts and Nevis uh, could visit Indonesia without visa and now uh, Indonesian nationals uh, also uh, can visit uh, this country without visa. So this is uh, uh, a good uh, incentive for both sides and it also encourages the uh, increase of people-to-people -people contact in the future. And uh, our task here uh, with Ferran, our uh, honorary council, is to uh, promote, to encourage people to get uh, interact each other in order that we know each other better. And this morning also I uh, proposed uh, an idea that it is timely to uh, inter interact more closely between uh, the West and East, you know, that in the past uh, they call us Indonesia as East Indies <laughs> and now here yeah, in South Kent, the, the, West West the West Indies. So this is, I think, uh, timely to uh, interact uh, closely to uh, uh, to promote our relations and cooperation more closely between West Indies and East Indies. Yes. There is so much that we share, even in terms of island life and the tropical uh, climate and the agriculture, because you would grow certain foods that we grow and things like that. You're involved in fishing, and even in terms of disasters, you can identify with having disasters. And there are a lot of areas in which there is you know, that there can be cooperation among your people and our people. And I do know that you would have assisted in disaster management workshop and not just scholarships and training, but you mentioned the batik making. And of course, in Indonesia is famous for its batik. <laughs> and of course, we have here you know, in St. Kitts, you know, we do batik as well. At, um, we have caribel batik, the rum and, and so on. And having established diplomatic relations on the 30th of January in 2014, there is a lot, I think, Your Excellency, that your country has cooperated with the Federation of St. Kitts and Navy is on, and you mentioned one of them being the visa waiver that we can travel, you know, to each other's country without a uh, visa for a particular time. So, as you leave to go back, someone will replace you. Is that so? Surely. <laughs> Surely. <laughs> And we look forward to the continued relationship between Indonesia and St. Kitts and Nevis. I know that the government of Indonesia is seeking election to a number of candidatures. Could you tell us a little bit about those? Well, uh, in the uh, broader spectrum, and. Uh, more on political ones, I think. Uh, between our two countries, Indonesia and Zenkin and Nevis, uh, uh, have shared uh, common interests, and common position to Western issues. Uh, for example, the nature where we live, you know, because uh, Indonesia and Zenkin and Nevis are island states. Uh, Indonesia consisted of, uh, consists of more islands. Yes, 17,508, 17, no? uh, but somehow we live in islands. That's why Indonesia, uh, since three years ago, uh, is a proponent of what we call it archipelago and island states. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we uh, established a forum uh, supported by the uh, United Nations Development Program and we move forward. Uh, 
uh, we identified, uh, we have identified the problems that we change, and we need to harness the resources to uh, mitigate uh, the problems of uh, climate change, for example, because it will affect yes. uh, our islands. And, uh, uh, we have been cooperating closely uh, with uh, St. Kit and Nevis, and uh, St. Kit and Nevis has become a co-proponent also to that forum. And, and that's why uh, my government uh, is very uh, grateful to the uh, active uh, participation by St. Kitts and Nevis by sending uh, its dele delegates, you know, high-level delegates, to the forum. And uh, we look forward also that uh, next uh, November there will be another uh, ministerial meeting and uh, we hope that uh, St. Kitts and Nevis will take part in the forum. And uh, hopefully, uh, next year, uh, we will organize a leaders' forum. Uh, I think it will be a good forum to uh, share the experience how to uh, harness all resources uh, to mitigate the problem and how and the uh, member countries uh, could take benefit from the forum. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, uh, the, the uh, political spectrum and uh, back to your questions that uh, we uh, are seeking uh, sports from the like, uh, government of St. Ken and we, We've been doing uh, uh, so many years uh, ago and uh, uh, the uh, government of St. Ken and Nevis has always uh, demonstrated uh, its position uh, very supportive to us. Uh, I can name it that during the election of uh, Indonesia to and the Security Council membership, and also in IMO, for example, no? uh, in the uh, Postal Union. So uh, we uh, value uh, the uh, support and contribution of St. Kitts and Nevis to us. Yes. And uh, it again demonstrates that our uh, relations, and the political relations, are very, very close because we have shared our common interest common position and it's for uh, the uh, the uh, let's say the interests of many the whole world your excellency is grappling at this time is the COVID-19 pandemic it has done so much damage to the world in terms of the economy and other areas of people's mental health and other things. It's, 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 it's using up a lot of the resources of countries. What is the situation like in your country, in Indonesia? Um, like many other countries, uh, COVID-19 and uh, the first time in Indonesia in March. And uh, since then, uh, we are able to uh, manage uh, we can control uh, the uh, contagion, but uh, in June uh, this year, we got surprised of the spread of uh, Delta variant, and it caused us a lot, and it uh, make us more uh, alert and careful uh, to the management of the uh, how to cope with the uh, pandemics. Uh, uh, until now, we have more than 4.1 million infected in total. But uh, we have also a big number of uh, recovery, uh, more than 97%. Uh, of course, uh, because we have bigger population, <laughs> we have 273 million people. Then also, it's a big task also for us. Uh, we need at least 400 million doses of uh, vaccines uh, to um, to form uh, herd immunity. Uh, it's a big uh, doses, you know. It's a big challenge also because uh, my country uh, does not produce uh, the vaccine. But now we are. We are uh, trying our hard effort uh, to uh, develop our own vaccine. Already in the third phase, uh, 
of uh, clinical test. Hopefully that will be successful. Then it will help the, our fellow people uh, to keep them um, healthy. No? And of course, uh, it's a matter of choices, and it's very difficult choices. No? Which one should be given a priority? Uh, whether we open uh, the activities for economy or we should, let's say, uh, make limitation, <laughs> right? Yeah. So health first or economy first. But we need to manage a balance. Maybe. There's a balance because uh, without health, there is no economy. You're right. <laughs> and without health, there can be no healthy economy. <laughs> You're right. You're right. But so. uh, uh, as as you are aware, that's uh, right, Mr. Benjamin, Mr. Benjamin, it occurs everywhere. So um, even we have bigger population, but we suffer less in comparison with uh, the other countries. So I think uh, it's uh, an effort, extra effort by the government, by all the people. And if we can compare uh, during the uh, first SARS uh, uh, COVID, no? uh, we have never experienced such uh, diseases that people were not get used to uh, wearing uh, masks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's different from uh, those our fellows, let's yes. say in Hong Kong, yeah, yeah, we are in China, yeah. Vietnam. They had experience before the first SARS, no? then they uh, get accustomed that is uh, to the habit. Yeah, in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to teach our uh, people with new norms, we no? have to keep uh, distancing, we have to wear masks uh, uh, every time, and then we have to sanitize our hands every time. So. But uh, finally, uh, people understand. Yes. the importance of health. Certainly. Ambassador, we are happy to have the Honorary Council, Mr. Farron Lawrence, of course, who is a conduit, you know, and he is working on behalf of St. Kitts and Nevis, working on behalf with the ambassadors and Indonesia in helping us here in the Federation. And, and we certainly, you know, are grateful definitely to have him. Is there anything that you would like to say to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis before we leave this interview? Yes, um, why we decide to appoint uh, Mr. Farron Lawrence uh, to be our honorary consul because we rest assured on him that uh, he uh, is keen to bridge our interest, the interest of Indonesia and the interest of St. Kitts and Nevis uh, with the end of uh, benefiting uh, to, uh, of our relations, cooperation. Ferran knows my country, so he uh, once visited my country for a couple of days, no, enough, enough to get to know uh, superficially, you know, but uh, we supplied him with uh, more information and uh, we also connect him with uh, business people in Indonesia. So I think uh, uh, he uh, will be able to uh, attract uh, more Indonesian private sectors to come to St. Uh, Kit and Nevis and uh, vice versa. Uh, I'm sure that he will be able to encourage uh, our uh, friend uh, here from St. Nevis to visit Indonesia. Uh, it is a matter of uh, time, I think, and uh, I hope that in the future the uh, distance will not hinder our <laughs> relations. And uh, you know, because of the uh, uh, advancement of technology, advanced technology, we can benefit from this technology, and uh, I'm sure. Uh, that in the nearest future, our cooperation between the Indonesia and St. Kitts and uh, will be strengthened in a concrete uh, manner, in a concrete uh, way. 
and the body political, but I hope that in the economic sector also. Right. Well, technology has made the world a global village and definitely we are very pleased St. Kitts and Nevis, the government and people, it has been an honor really to have had the opportunity and pleasure with working with you, Your Excellency Priyo Ishwanto, in deepening the relationships between our two friendly countries. You know that is always very important and as we bid farewell to you we offer our best wishes to you, Your Excellency, in your next role and your future endeavors. And we look forward to the continued cooperation between Indonesia and St. Kitts and Nevis. So thank you very much for all that you would have done. Thank you, Andrew. That's right. Thank you very much. Thank you.